do you ever find yourself like completely caught up in a craft project that you thought was going to be super awesome and unbelievably cool and ton of fun and not nearly as much of a time suck as it ultimately became? That's me right now with chair upholstery. I have like four chairs sitting in my house right now, half reupholstered and I'm losing my mind right now. Like I need to get them done. So I'm going to keep this video kind of short today. We're doing a really cool one though. We're doing a test. So, you know, we're going to talk all about the test and why I'm doing it in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today we're doing a soapy test. So a couple months ago, there was this post on one of the soap forums about a clear, transparent, cold process soap, right? And no propylene glycol, no alcohol, no, no glycerin, nothing. Like not a hot process cook, none of it, just really interesting ratios of oils that you're really not supposed to use in these ratios. And I sort of filed it away and went, well, I don't know about that. But then I started thinking, I want to try it because my brain started sussing out why that could work. And I went, I want to see it for myself. And so that's what we are doing today. We are doing a recipe that I got from one of the uh, soap forums that is a transparent, that is meant to be a transparent cold process soap, not a melt and pour, but maybe it is. We're going to test that too and see if there's a meltability with it. But let's go because we're actually doing three of them. So we got to go. I have a gaggling group of girls downstairs in the rec room right now playing. So you're probably going to hear them all shrieking and giggling and screaming along to all of the music that they're doing uh, through this thing. And I apologize, but you know, this is the life of being in a COVID circle thing. And yeah, so this recipe, I was, I saw this recipe, um, gosh, months ago, it got posted on one of the soap making boards that is a transparent soap without propylene glycol, without glycerin, without alcohol, without a hot process cook. So a cold process recipe. And initially when I saw it, I went, mm, I don't know. And then I went on with my life. And as I, you know, went on with my life, I was sort of mulling it all over and whether or not it was possible really to do this. And so I started thinking it's, so here's the recipe, right? So it's a uh, 40% coconut oil, 30% castor oil, 30% canola oil, uh, with a 0% super fat, and your water at 3.5 times your life, right? And so I start thinking about that, and I'm like, well, the water content's very, very high, and the castor oil is incredibly high. Most soap makers will say don't ever soap past, you know, 5% on castor. And I have a memory from many, many, many years ago when I was, it's like five o'clock in the morning and I was making some shave pucks and I miscalculated and I did not realize that I had miscalculated until like, you know, six or seven o'clock that night. I had this greatest day ever. I was so accomplished. I did all the things 
and then I realized at like six o'clock at night, oh, I think I messed up the shave box. And sure enough, I ended up putting about like 9% of castor oil into the bar and it was sticky and it never fully hardened up. It was weird. But I started thinking about that, right? Like castor oil in and of itself, it has really like low temp, really great like low temp viscosity, right? And at higher temps, it acts as a really good lubricant. So I'm thinking with the extra water content, these three ingredients, because the coconut oil is definitely one that can make this kind of malleable and it's more apt to be uh, to allow its fatty acid structure to be changed. And with a high percentage of castor oil, you could theoretically create a transparent soap with this. And so then I was intrigued and I wanted to see if it was possible, but me being me, I am not going to test just one type, right? Because I also want to see what else can be done with it and what's going to kill the transparency. And I am going to be doing essentially three one pound batches to that effect. So that is what you are watching me do right now. I have weighed out three water lye mixtures and am doing three different containers for the oils. And I am very interested to see first I mean the first test we're going to do is just the recipe as it stands and not adding anything else to it the second is going to be adding a mica to it and seeing if it will still be transparent and the third is going to be adding kaolin clay to it now I'm reasonably sure that the addition of the clay is not going to yield a transparent soap but to keep this entire like video as honest as possible, right? I actually literally just made this soap and came right home and got the girls, you know, involved with their gaggle of girls for their sleepover thing and recorded the voiceover for the actual process. So I literally at this exact moment have no idea what the soap is going to do. It is at the shop right now it is in the oven. I decided that the best way to really force, essentially it's like, a, I'm thinking a transparent soap would be with like a gel and a C-pop on steroids, right? Because you have that extra amount of castor oil in all of it. That I'm thinking if you C-pop it, if you keep the heat high, it might, it might work really. So I am again here doing this having no idea what the soap is doing in the oven at the shop right now just to keep this as you're along for the experiment with me thing so again one of these oils will have the mica in it right there I just arbitrarily selected a mica and uh, the oil in the middle there that has the kaolin clay in it Again, I'm thinking that is going to yield a not transparent soap, which means I could never actually use this for any of my soaps because I have to have kaolin and I have to have clay of some sort in my soaps, but I might be pleasantly surprised. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I very rarely use a transparent soap at all. It's kind of hard to get the clay in. And the other one is going to be, again, just the recipe in and of itself, no additions, no scents, no anything, and we'll see what we have. So I am soaping all of these hotter than I normally soap my soaps. So about 120 degrees for both the oils and the lye. And again, keeping up with high heats to see what it does. And this is interesting right here. Like, look, look how super white. This is the one that has nothing else in it. Look how super white it got immediately. And the texture is already so interesting. Like. Uh, it's like a runny pudding. It's very strange and the Recipe itself is or the oil blend itself. It's taking a bit to get I mean, it's traced at this point It's it's emulsified at this point But it's taking a bit to get to a you know thicker trace because what I am doing with this is I'm actually layering all three of these one on top of the other in the same mold so we can see what they all look like when a cut like in contrast just directly on top of one on top of the other 
So it took a little bit to get this to a consistency that I thought would hold up the next layer. And even then, see how weird it is? Now that's going to be the high amount of the castor oil in that for sure. But it's definitely, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a little slimy. It's, um... Yeah, it, it, it looks kind of like a pudding, like a thin pudding, like a, I made, you know, pudding in a box pudding. And I find that fascinating and I'm very, very interested to see what something like this does after a heat cycle, after a seed pop, after a gel with those copious amounts of castor oil in it. And I suppose the reason why it's taking so long to get to like a medium trace is because it's 60% liquid oils right now. So, I mean, regardless of what oils are in it, something that has 60% of liquid oils, it, it has a more fluid batter longer, which, you know, sucks because for the first time in history, I don't want a super fluid batter. I want this to get kind of thick so we can put it in the mold. And I'm just not going to get this. Like I am continuing to mix this and it is not, it's not thickening up. It's, this is fascinating. Like, I found this entire process just so interesting and really very enjoyable, honestly, because I'm someone who likes to, you know, play with things and see what happens. And this was something that, again, when I first saw it, I went, no, I don't, I don't think so. But then as I started to kind of logic it out, I thought this might actually be possible. This might be a thing. And if it is a thing, that's cool. I mean, a cold process transparent soap is like, that's like a deal. That, that's, that, that changes the game in soap making. To what end, I'm not exactly sure. Like, I don't exactly know what you would use this for because the, uh, if you look at all the fatty acid profiles on this, it's not a great bar of soap in and of itself. I mean, it cleanses. The cleansing number is a little bit high for my taste. The iodine number is a little bit high for my taste. The moisture level on it is actually weirdly high. So I, I don't I don't know. I wouldn't consider it necessarily a well-balanced bar of soap. So I'm wondering also if in addition to, you know, it being a transparent soap, if it's also one that can be cut down and remelted like a true melt and pour. I'm guessing not, but on the other hand, if you could use essentially a, you know, a castor oil in like really high percentages instead of like a propylene glycol or your glycerin or whatever to achieve a base that is meltable, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. And for all the people who hate hot process, like, you know, me, if you can make your transparent soaps or your melt and pour soaps this easily with a cold process recipe well then that's that's deals right there that's amazing but now this again it is going to be covered I'm gonna spritz it it's gonna be covered but you see that look at that it's a weird consistency it's really weird but we are going to cover this and spritz it we're gonna spritz it and cover it and then put it in the oven for C pop so it is going to sit in C pop overnight so I can try to force a gel because my best guess on this is it is the gel that is making it appear transparent. Now I could be completely wrong with this and if I if it doesn't work I think I will try it without heating it at all and see what I've got but for this one I really do think it's the gel phase that's really going to you know kickstart the castor oil into becoming a sort of a transparent base really but you know we'll see in the cut. Okay, on to the cut, and this guy did get in the oven, gelled overnight, and it's weird looking. The texture on it is really strange, and it's slimy. Now, this is what I remember when I had done a uh, some shave soaps with too much castor oil. Slimy tops. It was not great. And, uh, yeah, you can totally see some transparency with that. Like... You can absolutely, not so much in the the middle or the, you know, the clay portion. And remember, I put pink mic in there and now it's orange. But there's some transparency in those soaps. They feel weird. You guys, they feel like rubber. Like, like rubber. And then the top of it is like that 
the, the jelly soaps, right? Which I'm not a fan of that texture uh, at all, but the soaps literally feel like rubber. It's the weirdest thing ever. And a little bit of transparency in the thicker cut bars. So the thin ones, they definitely have some transparency in the bottom layer. So I mean, all things considered, the the recipe and the thought process behind why it would work, sound. It, it works. It's just, oh, the texture is so weird. It's such a weird consistency, for sure. Like, so strange. And this is me dropping it on the counter to see if it bounces because it's it's like rubber. It feels like rubber. And then I realized I'd never actually dropped a soap. Like, does it do all of them bounce? I don't know. So I was just playing around. And now I want to see if it'll melt. So we're going to see if this is a melt and pour, if this is a, a melt and, you know, resolidify thing. And while that is heating up and melting down in the microwave, we're going to test the lather on these bad boys and see what it does. And I mean, there's a lot of castor oil in it, so it makes sense as well as coconut, but that's actually a pretty legit lather. The bar feels weird though. It feels like rubber. Oh, and it's way more transparent when you get it wet too. Yeah, I mean, it's a thing like that. It's transparent in the middle as well when you get it wet. Like that, it's totally a thing. That, it's definitely not a melt and pour thing though. This is not one that you can remelt. That looks like regular cold process soap when you melt it down to do rebatch. Really. So, also, did you know that you can do rebatch in your microwave? It's totally a thing. Yeah, you don't have to use crock pot. That's fun. I still use it, but you don't have to. But I'm just gonna put it in there just for funsies to see if it does anything. I. I don't think it will. This could actually make a really cool soap paste though, to do like a whipped cream soap. That would also work for this purpose as well and with the high amounts of castor in it, it could actually be a really cool whipped soap paste thing. But you know, I mean, the recipe itself, it worked. That is transparent soap, 100% cold process. You're all focusing on water and, and heat really to achieve that. It still feels like rubber though. 176, it's cool. Oh my God, that soap felt terrible. It felt like rubber, like actual rubber, like the rubber balls, like the bouncy balls or rubber. It was so weird to touch, such a weird thing. And then the sliminess on top, like soap jelly, it was, it was something else. And, and as you can see, it didn't really melt down the way that melt and pour melts down. It melted down like you would expect, you know, your regular cold process soaps to melt down in a hot process cook for rebatching. But you know, that's cool. The lather on this was actually really kind of interesting. Like right off the bat, really cool lather. And as you, you know, washed with it, the soap got more transparent. So it is what it is. That was a fun test. And I am not going to be putting these on the website, so I'm not really interested in selling them. But if you are interested in feeling them and soaping, I would like to send you a bar. So if you're interested, uh, just comment in your next order, just put in the notes that you are interested in one of these, you know, transparent soaps. And I'll ship one to you with your order and you can try it for yourself and maybe like squash it into a ball and drop it, I think it would bounce. I'm not kidding. It feels like it would bounce, but my test was not, how do you make it? Whatever. Anyway, um, if you are interested in following me on social media, you can totally do that. I am on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you are interested in more soapy antics, uh, subscribe to the channel. We do weird stuff like this all the time because I don't find it weird. I find it interesting and I get to apply science and sort of logic and chemistry and everything to the soapy process because that's what this all really is. And this was a cool test and I enjoyed myself. And so if you enjoyed yourself, subscribe, do the things. For those of you who are subscribed, you're awesome. I hope you have been enjoying yourselves. And you know, if not, let me know and I'll make something that you wanna see. And that would be cool too. But yeah, I appreciate you for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. Thank you so much. I am out of here for today. I have an upholstery project calling me, so I gotta get to it. Bye.